Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave. And in this Magento 2 Basics tutorial, you're going to learn how to enable or disable the check stroke money orders option in Magento 2. And with that said, Dave, this is really simple. It's a yes, no box. But if you do choose yes, there are some additional settings which we'll need to set. So with that said, let's jump across to our desktop. Oh, and by the way, do follow us along in your system. So Dave, we've been to come across to our Magento admin area. We need to get into the configuration section. We find that by going to stores and then underneath the settings menu, click on configuration. Now it is worth noting, just like the rest of our tutorials, we are just gonna be showing you how to set this up for a single Magento 2 website. Of course, with Magento 2 and also earlier versions of Magento, you can have multiple websites, multiple store views, and you're able to set granular control over each of those store views and stores. If that's something which you desire, you'll need this drop down box up here. And of course, we cover how this drop down box works and the implications of using that in a separate video tutorial, which you'll find in our library. But, Dave, with that said, let's go and set up and enable or disable our check or money order settings within Magento. So to do that, we'll need to scroll down and then from the left hand side, if you expand out cells and then click on payment methods from the left hand menu. Now, Dave, you'll notice here, we've gonna got our merchant country set to the United Kingdom. As you may have been able to tell, both myself and Dave are based in the United Kingdom. So Dave, we just need to scroll down our page and we've actually got the check money order section expanded. If that's just showing as a row, like you can see on the screen right now, then all you need to do is just press the down arrow on the right hand side. Now, if your check or money order section is disabled, so that's been set to no, okay, you'll want to enable this section by choosing yes. Now, Dave, we are based in the UK and we spell check slightly differently, don't we? We do, yes. So we've just changed the spelling on the title and just a quick note here, that's the title which your customer sees while they're checking out on your website. So if check, C-H-E-C-K makes sense to you, leave the spelling like that. Or if you're in the United Kingdom, then you might want to spell check slightly differently. Now Dave, new order status, this is really important. We would strongly suggest leaving this as pending. And the reason for that is very simple is because the customer needs to send you the money order or the check and then that then needs to be processed. Also, you may want to restrict which countries are able to send you a money order. So, for example, if you're based in the United States and we send you a check, then there's probably going to be some bank fees when you go to cash that check within your post office or within your bank or vice versa. So, what we're going to do is choose specific countries. We're then going to scroll down and in our case, we're going to choose the United Kingdom so that only customers from the UK can send us checks or money orders. Now, Dave, remember I said about those additional boxes? Yes. Where it says make check payable to, this is where you would want to enter your company name or if you're a sole trader, put in your personal name. So in our case, we're going to put in understanding E, if I can spell like so. Then send check to, this is where you'd want to put your postal address. So you'll need to put your address in here. So some streets and then some city obviously you would put true information in there and then i'm actually based in bristol so we'll put some details in there and with that said dave there's a couple of options down here at the bottom minimum order total or maximum order total so this is the total value which the customer has got in their shopping cart and they've gone to check out with you may not want to accept checks for orders say over 100 pounds for example, $100. Or you might wanna set a minimum on them to maybe 50 pounds, for example. You can enter those values in there. And of course, if you don't wanna put any restrictions on them, then you can leave those values blank. Now, Dave, the last option which we've got in here is sort order. So I'm actually just gonna expand out bank transfer on here. And let's say that we want our check on money orders last within the checkout. So imagine our customer's got a collection of different payment options and we want check or money order as being the last one in the list. Now I'm gonna enter a value as 30 in there. And basically the numbers ordered from zero 
down to lower numbers. So the lower the number, the higher it appears within the checkout flow. So we've set our money order as being a value of 30, but we wanted bank transfer above that. Now I'm gonna quickly just enable that and then go and choose sort order. And then maybe we set that as a value of 20. So our bank transfer will be higher than our check or money order when the customer goes to the checkout. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense because if you have multiple payment options available, you might not want check or money order to be the first one that appears in the list because that might crucially not be your favorite method to receive payment or your customer's favorite method to give payment. So by moving it further down and putting more conventional payment methods first, that's a big win for your website. Exactly. Now, to wrap this up, we need to do two things. The first thing is to click Save Config at the top. When we press Save, we need to clear out the caches and there's the pop-up message. So if you then click on Cache Management at the top, then on the left-hand side, click the little drop-down box, select all, and then submit. Our caches will be cleared. And of course, you can now go into your website, go and add a couple of items to your cart. Of course, if you set the minimum or maximum values, then you can go and check that out, go and add a couple of items which are either in that range or outside of that range. Go for the checkout flow, and then you'll see that payment option available for your customers. So for myself, Matt, and of course, Dave too, we both hope that you found this video tutorial helpful. And on that note, for myself, Matt, and from me, Dave. Cheerios. So from myself, Matt. And me, Dave. We hope that you found this video tutorial helpful. If you have, then let us know by leaving a thumbs up on this video below or subscribing to our YouTube channel. We believe to use Magento, you don't need a degree in nerd. And we've created you over 300 step-by-step -step video tutorials at understandinge.com to help you. In these tutorials, you'll learn how to use Magento with no prior knowledge. How to build a fully responsive Magento website for just $99, which is about 65 quid. How you can use Magento to sell on eBay and Amazon with M2E Pro. And you'll be joined by over 6,000 fellow business owners just like you. And the best part is, it's free to join. So for myself, Matt. And me, Dave. We'll see you there. Cheerios.